Good morning, family. Good morning. And for you joining us online, please check in, leave a like or a comment so that we'll know that you're here. And if you have a prayer request, please visit the website and on the top bar, click on the digital yellow card and leave your request and I will pray for you and your request every day this week. When the service ends today, we've got drive through communion available on Tilden Street side of the campus today from 11 a.m. to noon. And then on Tuesday through Friday of this week, we're closed tomorrow for Memorial Day, but on Tuesday through Friday this week, May 26th through the 29th, we'll have drive through communion from noon to 1 p.m. and then again from 5 to 6 p.m. every day, and I hope to see you there. Bishop Brewer is allowing us to resume public worship and next Sunday, May 31st, is Pentecost and our grand reopening. We're having all five services at their regular times and places in the Pentecost picnic at 5.30 in the parish hall and watch for an email this week from me with details about all of that. Now, I know that many of us may continue to self-isolate for a while and we honor and respect that decision and we will continue to love and serve you online and by phone and by mail. But for you who choose to venture out back to church, it'll be great to be together again. I love you. I've missed you, and I can't wait to see you in person. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us sing from the hymnal number 217, 217.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. And let's be seated for our lessons. Our first lesson today is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, 6 through 14. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in the, to the ends of the earth. After he had said this, he was taken up into heaven before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from the, their sight. They were looking in, intently into the sky as he was going over when, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood and beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you go, stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come again in, in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they, had, were, where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together in constant prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, as, and, and with his brothers. He, then, in those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and he said, brothers, and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled through which the Holy Spirit spoke along with, long ago through David, considering Judas, who, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 68, verses 1 through 10. You can find it in the Book of Common Prayer on page 676. And if you will join me at the half verse, please. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let, let those, those who hate him flee before, before him. him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As, As the, the wax melts, melts at the fire, so let, let the, the wicked perish at the presence, the presence of God. God. But the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let, Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh, Yahweh is his name. name. Rejoice, rejoice before, before him. him. Father of orphans, defender of widows. God, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the, but the rebels, rebels shall, shall live, live in dry places. places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when, when you, you marched, marched through, the through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai. At the, at the presence, presence of God, God, the, God the God of, of Israel. Israel. 
You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You, you refreshed, refreshed the land, land when, when it was weary. weary. Your people found in their home in it, in your in goodness, your goodness oh God, God, you have, you have made, made provision, provision for the, for the poor. poor. The second lesson today begins with 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy and the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John chapter 17, beginning in verse 1. At the Last Supper, at the end, after Jesus, Jesus looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you've given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Now, have you ever noticed how often the definition of good versus bad is merely a matter of personal perspective? In every athletic event, every award ceremony, every election, there's always a portion of the population going, yay, that was great, how good that was, and another portion of the population going, no, no, we got robbed. Remember back in 2008 when the economy tanked and housing, housing values plummeted? That was bad if you wanted to sell your house or if you were upside down in your mortgage. But about that time, Debbie and I bought a house and from a bank. It was foreclosed and we paid half of what the previous owner had paid. It was great for us. But now our house is worth twice what we paid for it, which sounds good, except we don't want to sell it, and we have to pay taxes on all of that extra value. Good or bad? Depends on who you talk to and their point of view. Well, the same thing happens today with Jesus' ascension. Now, I want you to imagine being there and how cool that would have been to be on the Mount of Olives with the disciples as Jesus goes up into heaven. And one of them says, that's great. 
And another one of the disciples, probably Thomas, says, no, that's terrible. I can't believe it. He's left us again. This is so bad. Remember, and the other guy says, no, 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 this is good, this is good. And the, Thomas says, no, no, this is bad. Remember, remember when that good Friday, that first time he left us and how horrible that was? Well, yeah, Jesus did call that good Friday. And yeah, it was bad for him, but it was, it was good for us because Jesus' death on the cross paid the penalty for our sin and our selfishness. It ransomed us from hell it destroyed death and made all of creation new. That was a good Friday. In fact, that was the best Friday ever. And then it got better on Sunday when he rose from the dead. That was, that was really, really good. Well, yeah, but you know, the devil hated that, but who cares about him? And it got even better than that, that for the next 40 days, Jesus hung out with us and he told us about the kingdom of heaven and he promised us that we would have power to be his witnesses. That that was good. Yeah, yeah, but now there's this. And he's left us. He's gone again. And that is bad. No? No, that, that's actually good. How can you say that? We had him right here with us. We could see him. We could hear him. We could touch him. We could, we could smell him. He was right here with us. And what have we got now? We've got this fading memory of him as he faded off into the sky this is, this is bad. This is really, really bad. Well, it is sad, but it's not bad. Now, it's, it's bad for us as disciples, but it's good for the rest of humanity because if Jesus stayed here, how many people would he be able to listen to and talk to and help and, and heal and love? You see, now that he's... God in heaven, and he's gone up into heaven, he's God, and he's everywhere with everyone all the time. That's, that's good. Now, Jesus' ascension was, was bad for his little band of followers because they didn't get to be with him in person anymore, but it was what was best for the rest of us. Because if Jesus had stayed here on earth, how many of us would ever get to see him? How many of us get to hang out with the mayor or the bishop or the governor or the president or the pope? Very, very, very few people. And imagine if Jesus were still here, he would be limited by being one guy at one place and one time, limited to what he could do and with whom, and the rest of the world would be limited by who had access to him or not. But now he's everywhere, all the time, with all of us, always. And that is so good. Now, if he were still here, we might actually have a shot at seeing him since everybody comes to Orlando sooner or later. But his being in heaven also gives him another way to identify with us as human beings, especially during this pandemic, because the ascension is when Jesus was able to start working from home. There he is, up in heaven. Okay, what's he doing now? Well, he's not been taking a 2,000-year nap. He's been busy, very busy, doing all the things that he promised us that he would do. So what's Jesus doing now after his ascension? He's praying for us. He's praying for us just as he prayed for us when he was here. We heard that tonight at the end. We heard that now in the end of the Last Supper when Jesus prays, Father, protect them by the name, power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Since his ascension, Jesus has been praying for us continually. It's good to have people praying for you, isn't it? And you have a bunch of folks doing that. Now, I pray for 10 families in the Messiah family every day. There's about 300 families in the Messiah family. So that has me praying for each of you personally, by name, at least once a month. Now, I do that always, but since we've not been able to get together for the last three months, I've been writing you postcards, letting you know when I'm praying for you and what I'm praying for you, and I'm on my fourth round of doing that. 
and I'm going to continue until this pandemic passes and we can be together again in person. I, I may quit writing you, but I'm still going to be praying. And our new daughters of the king are going to follow that same example. And each of them is going to be praying for 10 families in our parish family every day. And our vestry, each member has a page of the parish directory that are their people to pray for. And I hope that your vestry person has contacted you to let you know that they're praying for you and asking for what you'd like them to pray about. Because when our vestry gets together every month and when our staff gets together every week and when our clergy team gets together every other week, we pray for you. And every week when I get together with Mary Kay Predmore, our senior warden, we pray for you. We want to cover this whole place and each of you with prayer just like Jesus is doing. And if all of that's not enough and you have a crisis, you can call Elise Bradford in the prayer chain and a couple of dozen people will be praying for you immediately. Now, if all of that is good, and it is, it's even better because all of us are praying for you, but Jesus is praying for you continually. That's what he's been doing since his ascension, and that's good. What's Jesus doing now since his ascension? He's praying for you, and he's pouring out the Holy Spirit upon us. He promised his disciples today, he says, wait for the power that God is going to give you. And you will be my witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now that's good. No, that's bad because the Greek word for witness is martyr. Ouch, that's bad. No, that's good because as we are Jesus' witnesses and share through word and example the good news of God in Christ, whether we're actually martyred or not, we get to be with Jesus and partners with Him as He makes things happen in the rest of the world. We get to be His witnesses and change the world with Jesus, one child, one person, one family, one community at a time, and that is good. So what's Jesus doing now since, he's ascend, since His ascension? Well, He's praying for us, He's pouring out the Holy Spirit upon us, and He's preparing a place for us. We heard last week in the gospel lesson at the end of the, the Last Supper when Jesus says, in my Father's house there are many rooms, and I'm going to prepare a place for you so that you may be where I am, that Jesus is building a room onto God's house just for you, so that you can be as close to Him as you want to be forever. What's Jesus been doing since His ascension? Well, He's been praying for you. He's been pouring out His Holy Spirit upon us. He's been preparing a place for you, and He's planning for His coming again in glory. You see, Jesus is coming back, just like we say in the creed every week, but this time it's not going to be the baby in Bethlehem. He's coming back as a conquering hero that He's going to fix everything broken in the world. He's going to take our upside-down world and turn it right back up. He's going, to, he's going to forgive all of our sins and heal all of our iniquities. He's going to put an end to war and crime and cruelty. He's going to mend every broken heart and every broken relationship. He's going to fix everything that's wrong with the world and call us to be with Him forever with Him and God and each other always. And that's good. If Jesus were still here, He wouldn't be able to do all of that. And what He's been doing since His ascension is all the things that He could never accomplish if He were still here with us. So, I'm glad He's gone. How about you? Because since He's gone, that means He's praying for us and pouring out the Holy Spirit and preparing a place for us and planning for His return. All good things. I'm glad He's gone, but I'm even gladder that He's coming back because when He does, we get to be with Him and each other forever, and it's all going to be good. Everything's going to be good. In the meantime, however, here we are stuck on earth. Where some things are good, 
But there's a lot of bad as well. People who mistreat each other. Wars and crime and famine and disasters and diseases like the one that we're going through now. And then these bodies that get tired and get old and get hurt and get sick and deteriorate and die. Life is hard, always has been, always will be, and it will be that way until Jesus comes back. And we know that. Peter told us that today as he, as he writes, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come upon you as though some strange thing were happening to you. But rejoice inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. You know, life is hard. Let's not be surprised when it seems that way. Many parts of life are bad. Bad things happen to everyone. But God's in the midst of it. St. Paul promises us in his letter to the Romans, God causes all things to work together for the good of us who are called according to his purpose. God causes all things to work together for good. He does not cause all things, but he causes them to work together and pulls good out of it. Bad stuff happens to everybody, and God does none of that. But his promise is that in the midst of everything, he's tucked some good. There's some good buried in the bad somewhere if we will look for it. If we will look for it. Now, that happens. For instance, in the midst of this COVID thing, horrible, horrible, that has put millions of people out of work, has made tens of Hundreds of thousands of people sick. Tens of thousands of people have died. We've not been able to see each other for three months. But in the midst of all of that bad stuff, God has been very good to our parish family. So far, there's about 500 of us, and as far as I know, no one has tested positive for the disease. And though several of us think we may have had it, and one of us has tested positive for the antibodies, as far as we know, nobody's has it. All of that prayer seems to be working. Now, we've not been able to worship together for a couple of months, uh, but we've been live streaming and on the internet, and we have 300 to 1,000 people watching our English service, and 400 to 1,000 people, yeah, you're the star, 400 <laughs> to 1,000 people watching our French service every week. We are indeed God's witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We are getting to change the world with Jesus, one child, one person, one family, one community at a time. We've not been able to meet together at the altar rail and, and share the body and blood of Jesus together, but we have distributed over 1,400 servings of individual communion at drive through communion to our people and to people in the neighborhood and to lots of folks from other churches who are not giving communion at all. Uh, we've not had many people here on Sunday to be able to put anything into the plate, but giving so far this year has been pretty much the same as it was this time last year. And thank you for embracing online giving and mailing in your checks and bringing it by during the week. Uh, on top of that, we received $123,000 from the Payroll Protection Program, which is going to free up a lot of our regular operating funds to be able to invest in the kingdom of God somehow. And our vestry meets this afternoon to start beginning praying and listening to God about what He might want to do through that windfall. We've not been able to see each other in person very much, but our volunteer office angels and our vestry and our clergy uh, team and our staff have been touching in with everybody in the whole parish by mail and email and phone and text and social media. Uh, we've not been able to be together in the same room so far, so we have upgraded our technology so that we can now live stream our services from the church into the parish hall onto the internet and to infinity and beyond. 
There is no doubt about it. This COVID-19 thing is bad. But God has been and is with us, getting us through it and bringing good out of it. And that's how God works. And that's good. Now, have you ever noticed how often the definition of good versus bad is merely a matter of perspective? In whatever bad that happens to you and to people that you love, there is some good buried in there somewhere. God promises that. And rather than letting the bad beat you up or beat you down, let's look for and discover and then grab a hold of the good that God has for us. Please stand, and turning to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us profess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the cross of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. from three of the prayers of the people can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 387, 387. Please kneel. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your, that your name, name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and all the ministers and ministries of the whole world, Anglican Communion, and, uh, and for all lay persons, bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for the members of the Supreme Court and all appointed officials and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they, they may, may be, be delivered, delivered from their distress. We pray for those who have died Frank Chase's father, with Chase and Alex Backup's grandmother, Susie Backup, give, the, the, give to the departed eternal rest. Let, Let light perpetual shine, shine upon them. them. We praise for your sins who have entered into joy. May we also come, come to share, share in your heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others especially for those listed in the bulletin and those we name now. Eternal God, bless all schools, colleges, and universities, especially children of the Messiah Preschool, Messiah School for the Arts, and those we name now.
Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care in keeping all the men and women of our armed forces and those who serve as first responders, both here and abroad, especially those we name now. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in whose hands are living and the dead, we give thee thanks for all thy servants who have laid down their lives in the service of our country. Grant them thy mercy and the light of thy presence, and give us such a lively sense of righteousness, will that the work which thou hast begun in them may be perfected through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. If you've had a birthday or an anniversary, we want to pray for you at home. And so if you have, would you please stand up? And we want to pray for you for your birthdays. Lord, thank you for each person that is a gift to their family and a gift to us. And we pray for them this year that you would keep them healthy and whole, that you would continue to watch over them, lead them, guide them, open their eyes to see the good that you have for them in life. Amen. Amen. And for if you've had an anniversary, please stand with your spouse and grab hands or something and let's pray for you. Lord Jesus, thank you for the gifts that they are to each other and the gifts that they are to us. Thank you for the gift of marriage and how we get to see you in each other and be loved by you through each other. And we pray for each of these couples, Lord, that you would keep them healthy and whole in this next year, that you would draw them ever closer to each other and to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, wherever you are, reach out to someone and extend them the peace. If you're by yourself, make a phone call, send a text, or uh, log, uh, send, us, send us a comment on this thing, and let's say, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. O Lord our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power, because you have created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being.
Please stand. service continues on page 372 of the Book of Common Prayer, 372. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks, thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring fulfillment to the satisfaction of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world. He loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glories are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gift of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. And remind you that drive through communion is available today from 11 to noon and Tuesday through Friday from noon to 1 and again from 5 to 6 p.m. Tuesday through Friday, not tomorrow on Memorial Day.
post-communion prayer can be found on page 366 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty Almighty and ever-living God, we we thank you for feeding us us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for for assuring assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble and send your help from this holy place. May he give you strength. Remember all your offerings. Grant that your hearts desire and prosper all your plans. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And let us sing from the hymnal number 215, 215. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.